It has been a wild 24 hours in the NBA circle as we have the NBA Cup semifinals. But not only that, we've seen two trades get completed by before Sunday's trade deadline waiver. We also see a superstar on a team that has been battered with injuries, suffering a big injury. We also look at a player getting waived. So we're going to be looking at all of that recent news in the NBA on this episode on Switch City. Welcome back, y'all. Let's get into the video at hand. So the first news I want to look and cover is the oldest news, which happened yesterday afternoon, in which we saw the first trade be announced for this NBA season. Now, the trade cannot go through until tomorrow, as that is the deadline for trades to go through. But these trades have been announced, and we have seen two so far been announced before the deadline. And like I said, it is involving the Miami Heat, and they have agreed to trade center Thomas Bryant to the Indiana Pacers. The Pacers will send a swap of a future second round pick back to the Heat for Bryant, who was trade eligible on Sunday. And the reason why the Pacers did went out and make this move is the Pacers were scouring the trade market for a backup center after they lost big man Isaiah Jackson and James Wiseman to torn Achilles tendons. Bryant is in his eighth NBA season, averaging 4.1 points, 3.2 rebounds, and only 11 minutes per game this season. So we want to go over the breakdown here for Thomas Bryant. The Heat necessarily weren't providing a lot for Thomas Bryant. They want to go a little bit younger, use some of their other bigs, specifically their one they just drafted in Kella Ware and also Pell Larson. So with having those young guys wanting to get more room, a player like Thomas Bryant had to go. And the Pacers, like we said, were interested in backup bigs. They lost James Wiseman and Isaiah Jackson to Achilles tears. I, uh, both, I, I believe both non-contact injuries, as I I, just, I know at least James Wiseman was a non-contact injury, and that's tough. James Wiseman obviously looking to have a rebound season with this Pacers squad. Unfortunately, got injured right at the beginning. And for a player in Isaiah Jackson, who's been a young cornerstone for them, Obviously, him touring his Achilles is not great, but the Pacers want to contend. They want to compete. They have to get in that. They have to go and get some rosterable other players. So go out and getting a guy like Thomas Bryant, who was available for the low. Just a second round pick, I think, is a good trade for both teams. The Heat free up a roster spot to free some of their younger guys and get a second round pick in return for a player they weren't necessarily going to use. And for the Pacers, they bring in a guy in Thomas Bryant, who is an NBA veteran, who is from the Indiana area, who can go play. And if it works out for them, they can pursue a contract long term. But if not, they'd rather stick with their younger guys. They could ultimately go away with Thomas Bryant as he is on a one. He is on this final year of his deal this year. Ultimately, I think that was a win-win for both teams, and I think they both got what they necessarily needed. But looking at the next move, we can see that the Pistons today are waving center Paul Reed. And this is also from Shams Sharani, as he has an absorbent amount of news that he's broken down today. In 12 games, Reed has averaged 4.8 points, 2.3 rebounds in only 10 minutes. This was move was made to give Detroit roster and salary flexibility with the NBA trade deadline less than two months away. So the, pay, the Pistons... Felt like moving off a player like Paul Reed could be necessary and someone that they didn't need to have on their roster. And what this kind of raises a question to me is where are the Pistons getting involved in this trade market? Because they definitely are going to be a third team to help facilitate a trade. And that's why they had to waive a player in Paul Reed to give them some flexibility or help doing that. But they do have to fill out a roster spot by Sunday because they are under the league minimum and they cannot be doing that and they will get penalized. So the pace, the Pistons, excuse me, will have to pick somebody up. And we'll have to see who that is, or will they get somebody in a trade in this next couple of days? We'll have to wait and see. I do expect this uh, this weekend to be eventful in trades. Like I said, we've already seen two announced before the deadline has even gone through. And I do expect some teams that have been involved in trades, which we'll get into a little bit, to be still exploring some of those guys and be willing to sell off them early. But I think the Pistons did this to obviously get uh, some roster flexibility to get someone else and to do a per participate in a three-team deal. And I think this is a little bit weird for Paul Reed. He was pursued by the Jazz a couple seasons ago. I believe it was two seasons ago. Then the Sixers matched his contract, and the Sixers did not bring him back. They ended up waiving him to bring on, obviously, Andre Drummond, Adam Bona, Joel Embiid. Paul Reed was then picked up by the Pistons and then just really hasn't fit in with the Pistons, not really given that much run. I do believe that B-Ball Paul could still be a product in this NBA and still deserves a second chance. So I would be shocked. I would be shocked if he does not get picked up, even if it's off waivers or after waivers, he does sign a deal. I do expect him to find a contract still in the NBA. And I think once some of these teams kind of move around some deals, it'll be a little bit easier for a player like him to get a guaranteed 
contract and to be back on a team. And I'm hoping that he can find that in the NBA. We'll have to wait and see. But a little bit of an odd move by the Pistons, but it could be for something bigger in the future, regardless if that's immediately tomorrow in the next coming week or on the actual trade deadline. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into the trade that happened this afternoon, which again, this is announced. It is not fully gone through as it has to wait till tomorrow. But the Nets are finalizing a deal to send guard Dennis Schroeder and one second round pick to the Golden State Warriors for DeAnthony Melton and three second round picks. Sources told ESPN, a dynamic playmaker and scorer arriving to the Warriors. And if we want to look at a player like Dennis Schroeder, he's actually been a big difference maker for this Brooklyn Nets team so far this season. The Nets were expected to be bad. They were expected to be tanking. But Dennis Schroeder has had one of his better seasons this year off the starting for this team and playing alongside with these players in Brooklyn. And I think that he is definitely deserving of going to a contender. Obviously, the Nets aren't going to want to keep him if he's playing his best basketball. They're going to want to move off him in a $13 million contract. It's easily tradable for the Nets to kind of find a deal. And for the Warriors, it was very simple as well as DeAnthony Melton. The player that they traded to the Nets obviously is out for the year with an ACL injury. And it sucks for DeAnthony Melton to have to, you know, kind of get shelled for that reason. But if the Warriors want to contend, if they want to compete with Steph Curry, they're going to have to move off of that player and use that salary in a contract. So the Warriors are doing that. They are trading Melton and three second round picks, which is good for the Warriors, not having to give up a first because they do have four first round picks. They can potentially get five next season if they don't trade any or depending on how they use their picks this year. So for the Warriors, it could be better for them to save that pick for to, to trade a first round pick till next season once you have five, or they could wait to use those four picks to pursue some other guys, maybe Nikola Vucevic, maybe a Jimmy Butler, depending on what the Warriors want to keep their eyes on. They're still av available to make trades because they didn't give up a first for Dennis Schroeder. Dennis Schroeder is a little bit of a weirder fit to play alongside Steph Curry, but I still think he can be a solid guy and a solid point guard off this bench to play and give some offense that is needed for this Warriors team. Like we mentioned, he was a solid scorer and one of the better players on the Nets this season so far, and that's why the Nets have been doing so good. The Nets obviously want to tank. They're going to be selling on some of these players, and I expect them to sell more than just Dennis Schroeder. Obviously, the Warriors were interested in multiple guys from this team. They were said to be interested in Cam Johnson as well, but the Warriors did not want to part with Jonathan Kaminga to acquire a player in Cam Johnson. Therefore, Cam Johnson was left off the trade, and they just did DeAnthony Melton, obviously, for Dennis is Schroeder, but expect the Warriors to still be interested in doing moves to add up to their roster and expect the Nets to still be exploring those Cam Johnson trades, to still be exploring those Dorian Finney-Smith trades, possibly some other guys as well as they try to head towards the bottom of the barrel. But I do think that this move is a good one for the Warriors. I don't think it necessarily puts them into title contention. I still think that there's still some moves that need to be done, but extra guard help with Melton's obviously getting his injury was needed and necessary for this Warriors team to kind of function, giving Steph a little bit of a break and having a another guard that can pump up some good offense and Schroeder can kind of do that for this team regardless if it's not the perfect fit with the spacing and lastly I do not have the tweet for this but according to Sham Sharania Jared McCain has suffered a injury as well and he suffered a torn meniscus which he is going to be out indefinitely for the Philadelphia 76ers and this is not good like I mentioned this Sixers team has already been beaded with injuries so far this season they've had Paul George go down from the beginning of the year Tyrese Maxey has dealt with stuff and Bead has always been dealing with stuff recently going out and now Jared McCain their superstar, their young guy who's been kind of, you know, bright light to their season is also going down with an indefinite injury. And this is just very, very awful for Sixers fans. And I always honestly feel bad for them at this point because you can't, you, you expect things to go wrong, but you don't expect it to go this south where not only is your best player out, but now your rising star that is bringing everybody happiness to the city while your, star, while your main star is out is also now injured. And I think this is going to, obviously mess up with Philadelphia. I do see them not really panning out after this, and I think it's going to be a tough season, obviously. We'll have to analyze them at the trade deadline, kind of see what they do. I think they'll mainly stand pat. I don't see them going to add anything to change anything. I don't see them maybe besides like a KJ Martin trade or something like that, trying to move off of some contracts. But like I said, this is about Jared McCain. Unfortunately, he goes down with the injury. Very, very devastated for a player like him. As Like I said, he's been that one bright spot that alongside Maxi, but even with Maxi, Maxi has been solid, but hasn't been that great of a player. McCain has been, you know, that uplifting 
feeling in Philly for all their fans with having such a devastating season so far and now losing him for a definite amount of time and with no timetable is definitely going to sting for Philadelphia fans but like I said, let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section on all this NBA news that we had to break down. We went over the Jeremy Kane injury. Obviously, it's tough for Philadelphia fans. We went over the two trades that have been announced. The Thomas Bryant trade for the Pacers, which I think is a solid one. And obviously, the Dennis Schroeder to the Warriors trade, which I think is also a solid one for both teams. Then we went over the Paul Reed wave. Hopefully, he gets signed somewhere else. And like I said, tomorrow is the actual trade deadline. So expect some guys from the Nets to be involved. Possibly Utah and Washington are said to be early sellers as well. So names like Jonas Valanciunas, Dorian Finney-Smith, Cam Johnson, um, maybe even a Jordan Clarkson, a John Collins, names like that on some of these teams. Colin Sexton, make sure to keep an eye on and keep ready tabs on for possible trades leading up to the trade deadline or in the next couple weeks. Some of these teams want to be early sellers. But let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section on all this NBA news, how you guys honestly feel. If your team was involved, would it give me a rating in one of these trades, what you guys ultimately think. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a great rest of your day and peace out.